Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today our guest is uh, Jyot Sarup. Uh, she is a faculty from ICER Mohali, and uh, she is going to speak on Pali Winner Theorem as a spectral decomposition. Yeah, Jyot Sarup, over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Divyank, for the introduction, and uh, uh, thanks to the organizer for giving. Uh, inviting me to give uh, talks in this uh, year long program of uh, Harish Chandra lecture series. And uh, um, I will be talking on, so in today's talk, uh, I will uh, state and try to prove Paley Wiener theorem. And, uh, and then we will see uh, in the next talk, we will try to generalize it to some, uh, generalized functions and also view the spectral decomposition of the Laplacian. And uh, before I begin, I mean, please feel free to ask uh, any questions you have in the middle of the talk, that's okay. Um, right, so uh, let me just, um, if I understand that uh, you have been introduced to Plancherel theorem also, Right, and the Fourier transform has been defined. Right, so let me just recall a bit. What happened? Now my. Just give me a minute. Um, disconnected. Okay, now so it's working. So let me just recall the things which I would need. You know, first of all, let say F be in L1 of, so we are in Euclidean setting, Rn, okay? And we define the Fourier transform of uh, an L1 function as this integral transform like this. where dx is the Lebesgue measure. And uh, what, uh, if I think, uh, what you have also studied is that if both the function and its Fourier transform are L1 integrable, then we have the inversion formula for almost every x in Rn, we can write f of x as f hat psi e of two pi i x dot xi d psi, right? And uh, what else you have done, if I understand correctly, is the Plancherel theorem. That is this Fourier transform f going to f hat is a unitary operator on L2 of Rn. And if I recall correctly, that uh, Parasar Mahanti has also defined the space, space of Schwarz class functions. And he has also uh, uh, given um, uh, Schwarz space as a, a kind of a family of semi norms. And so, uh, yeah, well, I don't need it today. So, uh, but he has also talked about that the Fourier transform is an isomorphism on the Schwarz space in that family of semi-norms, right? So this means that if I take the Fourier transform uh, of, of any Schwarz class function, actually I will, so this is my notation. It's, this means that every I pick every function in the Schwarz space and take its Fourier transform. It is that set. So it is actually equal to this and this map is again. Uh, uh, so this means that if a function is Schwarz class function, then its Fourier transform is also Schwarz class. And in conversely also that uh, uh, every Schwarz class function is Fourier transform of a Schwarz class function. Right? So this is kind of quite useful in many contexts. Okay, so and uh, uh, so this is an isomorphism under uh, uh, in the 
if I equip uh, the Schwarz space with uh, this kind of fam family of seminars, uh, which is, uh, I don't remember what was the notation, maybe um, if I write alpha, beta of F as this supremum, gamma, where alpha and beta are positive, uh, non-negative integers, and then I multiply with uh, any polynomial actually. So maybe I should write mod x power alpha. That's okay. I take the supremum over Rn. So, so this will, and uh, obviously this partial derivative less than or equal to beta. These are the family of semi-norms and they are not norms on the first space. And then, uh, uh, so you can uh, uh, give it, uh, give the topology on S of Rn such that, uh, uh, you know, that if the convergence in this topology, Fn converges to F, if and only if Fn converges to F in each of these semi-norms, then under that topology, uh, this Fourier transform is an isomorphism. So why am I talking about that? Because, so today, I, I, since I will be talking about paley wiener theorem, so in Perivira theorem, what we will do is characterize the image of smooth functions with compact support in Rn. Image of, okay, Fourier transform of smooth functions with compact support in Rn, okay? So, uh, so before I begin, so let me just uh, recall that we know that you see, uh, we know that. Let me write. We already know that C C infinity of R n is a subset of Schwarz class function. Okay, and again, Fourier transform is an isomorphism on uh, on uh, Schwarz class functions, but. If you take the Fourier transform of compactly supported smooth functions, uh, uh, it will be, uh, yes, it will be a Schwarz class function, but uh, can we, uh, so we'll be able to say something more about the image of uh, continuous fun uh, smooth functions with compact support. So let me just, you know, try to give you one example here. So let, let's pick uh, uh, F to be the characteristic function of minus half to half. Okay, and let's look at its Fourier transform. So on R, n equal to one, let's keep n equal to one. Then what is it? Uh, so by definition, right? And then you can uh, uh, find out, uh, you can actually directly compute this because it's an exponential. So uh, what it will be is, uh, I think, sine of pi lambda divided by pi lambda, right? And you see that, uh, what is this function? So in fact, uh, this function is, uh, is actually an entire function. So you can actually make sense. Okay, let me write properly. Is an entire function. This is okay. I should say that f hat lambda is restriction of an entire function on C. Entire function restriction on R on the real line of an entire function. Yes, of course, entire function is on C. Okay. So uh, in fact, the case is this, that this is not just true for this kind of characteristic function. So if I pick any F, so you pick so let's, for simplicity, keep n equal to one always right now. 
and an epic f any smooth compactly supported function well okay i have not uh, um, in this this case we actually don't need right now smooth but okay let's uh, because i have talked i've told you that i will characterize the image of compactly supported smooth functions under the fourier transform so that's okay and uh, what is f hat at lambda by definition if it is uh, uh, if it is compactly supported smooth function so it is also l1 integrable so we can define it in the standard way okay x lambda d lambda dx right and now you see f is a compactly supported function which is right now smooth so in this expression look at this expression look at f of x e of minus 2 pi i x z dx where z is a is any complex number okay so what kind of a function is this let me denote it by p of z okay so first of all does this integral make sense is this well defined okay let us check so uh, when i say make sense means that is it absolutely integrable okay so that is if i take the modulus inside is the integral finite let's take the modulus so if i take the modulus so z is a complex number so let's say z is of the form u plus iv and then uh, um, what will be left with it with is um, x v dx right because if you take the modulus of the exponential uh, the imagine uh, the imaginary part uh, the modulus of that will be one okay and if f is compactly supported function this exponential will be uniformly bounded depending on t so suppose support of f is contained in some interval of length 2r then i can say that integral f of x modulus e of 2 pi x v dx is less than or equal to e of 2 pi r v integral mod f right and this this is finite because f is compactly supported smooth function so this this integral is actually finite. So, so phi of z is well defined. Okay, for every z in C, and you know my other claim is that phi, so phi is from C to C is an entire function. That is, it is uh, holomorphic on the whole complex plane. So there are many ways to uh, do that. So, so for doing that, so we can uh, first check that if p is a continuous function, and then if I if I can prove that uh, uh, the integral of p over any simple closed curve is uh, zero, then p will be an entire function. Okay. So p is in fact first. Let's check. Let's uh, check. That p is a continuous function. How do we prove uh, it is a continuous function? We need to say that if there is a sequence z n converging to z, then p of z n also converges to p of z, right? And uh, uh, can an anybody uh, tell what? I mean, from the students, of course, uh, others know. Can anybody comment that, uh, how do we prove that it is continuous function? I will just give the idea actually and not go into the technicalities of this. Hmm? Anyone from the audience? No? Okay. Then... Sir Jyotidi, one thing actually I want to say. Are you able yes. to hear me? 
But it's somehow okay, written live, so I don't know. Because no, some, I saw every one thought that, but it is not good. Some technical thing. Okay, anyway, okay, we will okay. upload. We are recording it. We will upload the recording. Okay, okay let me I leave it. Uh, uh, since nobody is answering, I will oh. keep it as an exercise. So will I answer? <laughs> of <laughs> course, you know it's okay. <laughs> I I thought that at least I would try to <laughs> so exercise that p is a continuous function. Try to use dominated convergence theorem. Right. So phi is a continuous function because f is compactly supported and uh, 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 inside the integral, uh, uh, you know, it is con it is integrated on a compact set and f is continuous, so you can do everything, anything you want to do like that. Okay. So why is uh, uh, so phi is a continuous function? And my second claim is. That if I take any closed, simple closed curve, gamma, and if I can show that the integral over that is zero, then uh, I know by Morera's theorem that phi is an entire function. Okay. But what is phi? How do we know phi? We know phi through this expression. So let us write that. It is integral over gamma, and phi is defined like this f of x e of minus 2 pi i x z dx and d z. So it, for each x, you see, e of minus 2 pi i x z, this is an entire function. This everybody knows. And I know that because it is an entire function. So if I take any close, simple closed curve, then this is 0, right? So again, the, uh, the question of uh, interchanging the integrals. And the thing is that here we can again do that because f is compactly supported smooth function. Well, to interchange, we just, we don't need smooth smoothness right now. If it's just compactly supported L1 integrable function, then also we can do that. And uh, uh, this will imply, so by Fubini's theorem, again, because this is absolutely integrable over gamma r and e of phi i xz mod dx dz is finite. And then you can use Fubini's theorem to interchange integrals. And this is equal to zero, right? So this will imply that integral of p over this curve is also zero. So therefore, by Morera's theorem, P is an entire function. P is an entire function. Until now, we have not used uh, smoothness of F. So what is the benefit we get? If F is also smooth, then my claim is another thing that if I multiply with any polynomial in Z, so Z power, M P Z. Okay, that is actually so. This is again a property. This is a claim. Some constant maybe depending on M, the degree of the polynomial, and also it depends on the function and e of two pi r imaginary part of Z mod. Let us see. Again, it is actually easy to see. How is just from the expression of P? Let's see. And if I multiply with say Z, let's just multiply with Z. And this Z I can move inside. And I will, what I'll do is I will try to write it as 
d by dx of e of minus q pi i x z and i also divide by minus q pi i right this i can write as this so this means that z times pz can be rewritten in this form and minus 1 by 2 pi i e of minus 2 pi i x z dx and now this is where we'll actually use uh, the fact that the derivative f is compactly supported and its derivative is also continuous so we can use integration by parts and the boundary terms will will vanish because f is uh, compactly supported smooth function so this will actually be equal to by integration by parts actually plus f prime x e of minus by i x z dx and uh, you see if f is compactly supported smooth function then f prime is also compactly supported smooth function right so similarly going on in this manner we will be able to show that this is equal to this is the mth derivative of f e of minus 2 pi i x z right and how do we get the bound we just do this we take the modulus inside and since f is a compactly supported smooth function so it will be the all the derivatives and the deri the support of the derivatives will also lie in the same set so we can say some constant depending on m and uh, integral as i have assumed that support of f is in the interval uh, of length 2r around 0 so i will just write like this and here again i will be left with 2 pi since x let's let me write like this imaginary part of z mod and mod x is less than or equal to r so we can uniformly bound it from the integral this is less than or equal to 2 pi r the imaginary part of z modulus and this integral is also finite so it's some number again which i okay so what is the conclusion is that if f is a compactly supported smooth function on r right now then uh okay i did not explain that point but okay let me see then f hat because f hat we only defined it on r but f hat is restriction on the real line of an entire function satisfying let's call that p which satisfies the following satisfying that if i take in fact any polynomial multiply it with phi that is less than or equal to some constant of course that constant may depend on the degree of the polynomial 2 pi r mod of imaginary part of z okay so this is the conclusion okay let me first define before stating the theorem let me define r of c this is called paley wiener space with the index r f is from c to c says so that f is entire and again if i take minus 2 pi r let me uh, write it here. Yeah, it continues like that. So that supremum over z in C times one plus mod z power m mod of f. Sorry. And e of minus two pi r. This is finite right for every m for all m 
integers bigger than or equal to zero. Okay. And I define for every R positive. Okay. For R positive. So this R is coming here in the point-wise estimates. And then I define the Paley Wiener space is the union of these. So what we have concluded is that for f in C C infinity of R, okay, the Fourier transform takes this space into this, right? And Pelevinet theorem says that that uh, it is not just um, I mean, it is also an onto map and it is in fact one to one. So let me now state the Pelevinet theorem. That is Fourier transform. Is one to one and one to map from CC infinity of R to Paley Wiener space. Okay. And in fact, uh, well, I have not proved the one to oneness, but I have at least shown that the Fourier transform of uh, compactly supported smooth functions lies in the Paley Wiener space, right? So, um, any questions? So far? Okay. If not, then uh, let me try to prove the second part. Okay. So, we have just shown It's shown that if F belongs to R, then F hat. So when I say F hat belongs to the Pele Wiener space, it means that it is, again, as I said, that it is restriction on R of an entire function, uh, which satisfies this pointwise. Uh, which satisfies this estimate, right? This is what I mean. Okay, for some R, obviously, because Bailey Wiener space is the union of PWR for overall possible R positive. Okay, so I, I, I'll just write, so this is, I'll just write like this. Okay, so now let us try to prove conversely. Conversely. So what do we have to show? And also, uh, yeah, one, uh, maybe before uh, going to the converse part, uh, is it, it's uh, clear that it is a one-to-one -one map. Maybe I will, I will say it in the end. Okay, so conversely, so that is, if I pick any function from the Paley Wiener space, which is this space, union of PWR, then I have to show that it is Fourier transform of a compactly supported smooth function, right? Uh, I mean, again, that entire function when restricted on R is the Fourier transform of a compactly supported smooth function, okay? So, Let's see in the converse manner. So let capital F be in the Spaley Wiener space. So that means that there will exist some R, obviously. So that is F is an entire function. And for some R, R positive, this supremum. minus two pi r mod of 
imaginary part of Z. This is finite supremum over the whole complex plane. Okay, for some are positive, and uh, now I will show that that it is Fourier transform of a smooth function. Okay, so let us define. So the obvious choice to uh, uh, to find the candidate. So we need to find some CC infinity function, right? Whose uh, Fourier transform uh, uh, is uh, capital F restricted on R. But okay, let me uh, before defining, let me tell you that. See, is it? Uh, it's very uh, clear that if capital F when restricted on R. Let me first write this. F restricted on R, actually it belongs to L1 of R. This is uh, obvious, why? Because you see, because of this condition, this, this is for all M, M positive. Let me just write like that. So if I want F to be integrable uh, in R, from here, what will I get from this condition that F, if Z is just real, then this exponential will not be there. So, and from here, I will at least get this one plus mod X over M for all M positive actually. And uh, uh, if I want it to be integrable on R, I, I just need M to be integrable on R m to be equal to two, so that is enough, so right? So f is an L1 function, okay? And uh, as I said, that I want to say that a capital F restricted on R is the Fourier transform of a CC infinity function. So, uh, so what I will do is I will try to define a new function, which will be like taking the inverse Fourier transform of capital F, and then I will try to explore some properties of that function. So let me define small f at lambda, or maybe let's uh, stick with lambda on the Fourier transform side. This is again integral over r e of two pi i x lambda d lambda, x is in R, obviously. And also before uh, uh, I go further, uh, you should all, also always see that if uh, here, at least in this, um, in the, whatever I did earlier, if f is a compactly supported smooth function, then f hat cannot be a compactly supported function, right? Do you see why? Because if f hat is a compactly supported function and f hat is already an entire function, so that, that will say that f hat will be zero. So f hat is a compactly supported function means f hat will be zero uh, outside a certain interval. And if an entire function is zero on a set which has a limit point, it is zero everywhere, okay? So uh, uh, this is important to know, okay. So now let us uh, see this. But what I what we are showing is that, in some sense, the inverse Fourier transform of this entire function will satisfy the required properties for f to be in C C infinity. So this is the claim. So claim is that f is a smooth function. That is, it is infinitely times differentiable function on R, that is the first claim. And the second claim is that support of F is contained in minus R to R, okay? So this capital R is the same R where capital F belongs, okay? Because F belongs to the union of PWR, so there will be, so in fact, F will be in PWR, for some R, so it is the same R. Yeah. Okay, so that will actually prove 
my uh, prove the converse part at least it is an on to map that is the fourier transform is an on to map okay so uh, how do we check first the smoothness of f so i want to show that at least f is once differentiable and then the uh, the other things will follow similarly okay so in fact i will show that first f is differentiable and same technique we can use to prove the higher derivatives also so what do i have to show so i have to take so x plus h minus f of x by h and i have to show that this limit exists as h tends to zero okay but we know how is small f defined in terms of the integral so i will just write that here it is integral of f lambda e of two pi i x plus h lambda minus e of two pi i x lambda and this is h we can take it inside the integral again the same kind of uh, uh, theory in analysis so if i if i write this function okay let me not introduce a new notation here so i will just write like this x plus h lambda minus so for each fixed um, lambda because i'm integrating over lambda and for each fixed lambda i know that what is the limit here this will be nothing but um, Two pi i lambda e of two pi i x lambda, right? Okay. Again, now the question is that can I take the limit inside the integral, and that I again leave it as an exercise. Use dominated convergence theorem to show because you see the thing is that. Because lambda times f of lambda is again integrable function, okay, and the modulus of this function is anyway one, because f lambda is less than or equal to one by, in fact, this if we use this some constant depending on m, one plus mod lambda over m for all m, so you can always choose m large enough to make it integrable. Okay, to show that. Right here, limit h going to zero, f of x f of x by h is equal to actually integral f lambda uh, the derivative x lambda derivative in x. Maybe I should write d by dx. Okay, and similarly, you can show the higher derivatives also because again, we have to. In fact, we I can put any power of lambda, and then choose m bigger than or equal to k plus two to make it integral. So f is a smooth function. All its derivatives exist, well defined. And uh, second thing we'll show is that f is compactly supported. Okay. Even before uh, showing the compactly supported thing, it is clear that uh, uh, clearly, at least from Plancherel theorem, which you have done in the last lecture, clearly f is also in L two because it's a Fourier transform of uh, an L2 function because of this property of f lambda, which uh, says that, okay, I should have written that it, it decays uh, faster than any polynomial. So, of course, small f is anyway in L2, but we will show that it is compactly supported. Okay. Right. So how do we show that it is compactly supported? Let me just re, uh, 
write here what is f Yeah. So, uh, so far, we have not used the fact that capital F is an entire function, right? All we used to deduce the smoothness of F, we just used uh, the fact that capital F decays faster than any polynomial. So, so far, proving that F is small f is compactly supported, we, this is where we'll use the fact that f is an entire function. And also the, uh, uh, that f also satisfies this kind of, uh, this particular kind of uh, estimate. Okay, all right. So, um, so capital F is an entire function. So obviously I will try to use contour integration. So let me draw a path. Let me choose any positive point X zero. Okay, and I will draw a rectangle and capital M I will choose later what this is. I, I'll call this curve as gamma M. Okay. And since F, capital F is an entire function, then I know that, okay, I should write like this. And F lambda times E of This is also an entire function, right? Because multiplication of two entire functions is an entire function. So it's integral over gamma m. D lambda is always zero. So D lambda here is the uh, you know the measure uh, the the uh, the length you know, the, that kind of measure, which. Uh, calculates the length of the curve, okay. So let us try to uh, split this curve into four parts. Okay, so first part is nothing but on the real line. Then the second one is M is fixed and the imaginary part is varied. So it will be um, from zero to x zero, f capital F at m plus i t e of two pi i capital M plus i t into x dt. There will be i also because of the and then. In this direction, if I take the integral in from here to here, I will have from M to minus M and capital F, uh, it will be lambda plus I X zero, P of two pi I lambda plus I X zero X T lambda. And the other part will be again uh, zero, sorry, x zero to zero, and capital F minus M plus I T. And we have E of two pi I M plus I T X I D T. Uh, right. So my claim is that um, if I take M, so you see the ultimate, what do we want to do is, so here if you see, this is the integral on the real line. And if I take M going to infinity, since capital F is an integrable function, so this will tend to the integral over the real line. Okay. 
and uh, uh, in fact it will be f of x right so that will give me some kind of estimates uh, here i should write r of f of x x right so i want to take m as large as i want so my claim is that these two integrals you can write this integral and this integral they will go to zero as m goes to infinity and then i will try to evaluate uh, uh, the remaining part okay so let's check that so i'll just show for one and the other one is similar way it's actually so let us see e of um, 2 pi i m plus i t x0 dt integral 0 to x0 yeah so in fact what i'll do is i can just take the modulus inside and try to use the properties of capital f and capital f is one plus m plus t power m for any uh, and then here i will get is e of minus two pi I should also write uh, because um, we have some exp because here I am m, m plus id is a complex number so I should also write e of the other um, estimate t right because the imaginary part of m plus id is t and here I will get a minus t x zero dt right and uh, you see this integral is over a finite interval and if i take m going to infinity this will surely be dominated by uh, some constant depending on r and x zero and all we'll have is one plus capital m power m for all m large and also there is a dependence on small m Okay, and then as I take m large enough, this can be made uh, as small as possible, right? So, um, so, so this means that this goes to zero as m goes to infinity. Okay. Mm. Right. And similarly, this part can also be handled. And uh, what do we have? We know that this is equal to zero. Okay. So this will tend to zero as m goes to infinity, and this will also go to zero as capital M goes to infinity. And then, but this equation will still hold, and I have not calculated what happens to this quantity as capital M goes to infinity. But obviously the limit exists because uh, one limit exists. So what we will get is integral over R f of lambda p of two pi i x lambda t lambda is equal to integral because I'm taking the minus. So I will make it like this f of um, lambda plus i x zero p of two pi i lambda plus i x zero into x right let me check yes d lambda okay and limit i'm going to infinity again this will tend to the whole integral over r because of the same property that capital f is an integrable function and here imaginary part is anyway fixed okay now from here, let us see what happens. Uh, okay, what do we get is this f of x. So what what is our aim? We want to show that f is compactly supported function. Right? So now this is my claim. After I get this quantity, And now my claim is that if 
x is bigger than r, then uh, okay. So now I will try to, maybe I didn't need to do that. I will try to use the properties of F. We know that this is less than or equal to one plus mod lambda plus X zero power M and E of two pi R mod of, well, X zero is positive x0 to pi r x0 right for all uh, m positive okay so you take any m bigger than or equal to 2 and what will i get is f of x mod using this inequality cm integral over r and if I take the modulus inside, the exponential will go and I will get this one plus mod lambda plus x zero power m uh, maybe I should yeah okay and e of two pi r x zero. dx and we also have e of minus two pi x x zero right. and this quantity is independent of x this exponential so i can say that f of x is less than or equal to some constant which now i don't care about m i just choose m says so that this whole thing is in integrable in i'm sorry i should have written d lambda in in lambda and I will get this e of 2 pi r minus x times x0. So x0 is a positive quantity, right? And if x is bigger than uh, uh, r now, so what happens? You see, the thing is this, that um, so this is a positive, uh, so r minus x will be a negative number, right? So if x is bigger than r, then r minus x is less than zero. And then now this is where the choice of x zero will come. So I can choose my x zero large enough such that this whole quantity is uh, very, very small. And uh, in fact, this, this number is also independent of x0 because x0 is positive. So we can, uh, we can get that, okay. So this means that if x is bigger than r, so f of x can be, mod of f of x can be made arbitrarily small. That is that f is actually zero, identically zero x is bigger than r and similarly we can do the same procedure as I said for x less than minus r by taking the the contour integration over on in the reflection of this uh, on this maybe on this um, I will write here so on this curve like this and then again take x0 going to infinity Okay, so this shows that uh, that the f we defined is if we define f like this or r then f is where capital F is coming from P W R. then f is a CC infinity function. And in fact, support of f is contained in this interval, r, okay? And then, you know, by inversion formula that f hat at lambda is actually capital F 
lambda, right? So this shows that this is also a one-to-one -one map and onto Ness anyway. We put. So Fourier transform is an isomorphism. Here I'm not giving any topology on uh, PWR right now. It is one one and on. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So in fact, I will not prove it right now. I don't have much time, but what we can also do is we can prove the similar analog of this in higher dimensions. So I will just mention. So what is this space? So if I take, you know, what, is, what do I mean by compactly supported smooth functions in Rn? And uh, uh, here in Cn, what do I mean by an entire function? It means this, that F is, I'll write here. And F is for each fixed variable. F is a function of n variables. and. Uh, and if I just vary one variable, it is uh, entire in the classical sense. So this is what I mean by F entire. And of course, uh, uh, here, the other property. Here we'll just have this same. Uh, and what will be the modulus? Uh, yeah, in, in CN, the, uh, you can define many norms, but I will just stick to the standard. And imaginary part here, I mean that you can uh, uh, write each coordinate will be a complex number and we just take the imaginary. If, if Z is of this form, say let, let's say in C2 and then mod of imaginary part of Z, I just mean that Y1 squared plus Y2 squared square root. The similar analog actually holds in higher dimensions also. So uh, this is a nice property of uh, uh, the Fourier transform, image of Fourier transform of uh, compactly supported smooth functions. And this is, uh, in fact, uh, we'll see in the next part of the talk that we actually don't need uh, smoothness we can talk about Fourier transforms on compactly supported distributions, and then what we will see what will be the image of Fourier transform under the, of those compactly supported distributions. I I think I will end my talk here. I think I'm on time. Also, anyway. Yeah, I think I uh, explained that, Chandan. Imaginary part of mod of that. Topology on S. Someone. What's the topology you are taking on S? Yes, I am taking the standard uh, uh, that uh, the fresh space formed from the uh, family of uh, semi norms on the Schwarz class. I think I had written it in the, I guess I did write. Mm, I don't remember. Maybe I did, yes. Yeah. Yeah, any other yes, questions? Yeah. Uh, sir, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I have a couple questions. One of them is very uh, elementary, I think. Uh, since uh, you said uh, the Fourier transform f hat is just the restriction of an entire function on the real line. Mm -hmm. so does that mean uh, uh, the Fourier transform is a smooth function for any f which is smooth? Does the smoothness get preserved? Because uh, well, what we need is uh, that f has to be compactly supported integrable function actually. Right. Okay. So uh, no, my question is: if f is smooth, then is f hat smooth? Because if f is entire, then no, f is no, smooth. need not be. Because look at this example. 
के एफ इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फंक्शन ऑफ एक्चुअली यू डोंट नीड माइनस हाफ टू हाफ एनी इंटरवल कॉम्पैक्ट इंटरवल देन एफ हैट विल बी अ स्मूथ फंक्शन बट एफ इज नॉट यू नो बट इफ एफ इज स्मूथ एफ हैट इज स्मूथ if uh, f is smooth f hat need not be smooth right because you see this this function this is an l2 function right yeah okay so uh, then its fully transform will be this function in the l2 sense right okay so it is not a smooth function Uh, is it possible to like extend the uh, the fact that f we have taken here uh, f needs to be smooth for the Kalevinger theorem, right? So uh, and you said we can extend it to other continuous functions of compact support instead of by yes. dropping the smooth. So uh, mm -hmm. what happens? What exactly happens if f is an L one function because f hat is defined defined in L one too, right? So what happens if yeah. f is an L one? then uh, uh, f hat if as long as it is compactly supported function then f hat will be uh, actually can be um, i did not use that word we we say that it can be extended as an entire function okay okay right. yes thank you yeah any other question uh so the main proof boils down to the conclusion that the fourier transform is not merely bijective but a linear homeomorphism is that so linear sorry i linear mean linear homeomorphism yeah linear homeo i mean uh, that means continuous along with its inverse yes if i give the uh, pressure topology on either side uh, yes on the on the uh, schwarz class function yes it is a homeomorphism we can say vector space isomorphism no 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 i mean it will be uh, a fresh space also, yeah fresh space isomorphism right yes 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 fresh space isomorphism exactly right. correct mm -hmm. so does the same uh, conclusion carry over to uh, the space of distributions as you said you are going to talk about it next time because we don't have a metrizable topology over there Uh, the uh, you mean uh, the tempered distribution? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the, uh, yeah, yes, it will the, be an, yeah, it will be inductive limit topology, but uh, there is no matrix as such. So, uh, will it still be a linear homeo? It will be a uh, uh, I so you mean to to say that in that uh, the topology on uh, on the tempered distribution, it is right. an isomorphism. Yes, it will be okay. So it will be a, a not merely vector, but uh, vector space isomorphism, but a uh, vector uh, isomorphism of topological vector spaces. Is that so? Yes, because the what is the topology we give on tempered distribution? No? So it depends. That, the, yeah, the, that comes from the dual, right? Yes, from the device. So, yeah, the that's, that, that's that's complete, but uh, that's complete, but not metrizable, I guess. Yes, but isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, but we don't need metrizability to say that it is an isomorphism. So you have to show it on both sides, uh, f as well as its inverse separately, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, the open mapping theorem doesn't apply there. No. But because it uh, because it's the dual of uh, the Schwarz space, so from there we can say because that is how uh, we define the Fourier. We'll see when we define the Fourier transform of a tempered distribution. That actually, it comes from uh, like in the dual. We, we if you have a map from on the space, how do you? How, what is the natural way to define it on the dual? And in the weak topology, lower thing is an isomorphism. The the induced map will also be. 
I mean, my belief is that uh, weak topology is rarely complete. I mean, it's it's not complete uh, on the space of distributions. I mean, in general. I mean, maybe in the space of for temporal distribution, it is complete. So it is. I mean, there it is complete. We mean. Yes. Uh, can you suggest a source so that uh, I can have a look at it before you speak next time? Uh, you can see Rudin's functional analysis. I mean, he talks about uh, this thing on distributions, right? Yes. A... Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jad, sir. Okay. All right. A any other question? Will you be sharing yeah. these notes? If not, let then let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you, Jasrup. Okay. Thank you, Vyam, for sharing. Also, I was asking, will you be sharing these notes? Ah, sure, I can share. Okay. Again, maybe you can sell the precise references where and the references. Ah, so this is a very classical proof. Uh, yeah, the next part I will definitely. Uh, the half a dozen textbook uh, treating it. So, what is the best source? Yeah, I think R Rudin also does it on the on this kind of spaces. I mean, not just on the temper distribution. He first proves it for CC infinity. So, I think a good reference will be. Let me just write it here in the yeah, bottom. Complex analysis. Uh, uh, yes, there is, and this functional analysis. Maybe both of them I will write. And the second one is again by Yeah, okay, then. If there's no more questions, okay. we will be closing the meeting now. Yeah. Thanks, Divya, right. for sharing also, and thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye.